is it going y'all welcome back to another video in this one we're finally getting back in the water we are going offshore spear fishing now i would love to post more of these videos but it is pretty much only doable in the summer months it is now june and the water is finally laying down enough and clearing up to where we can get out there and successfully go spearfish. Unfortunately, we're not going out in the panga in this video. It's still being worked on. Hopefully we can get it done soon and get out there while it's still really nice offshore. But in this one, my buddy Fisher invited me out there and we're going on a very quick last minute afternoon trip. We're only gonna be out there for an hour, so we're gonna make do with what we got. You guys aren't gonna be disappointed though. We had some really interesting conditions, but we made do with it and we got some nice, nice fish. You guys stay tuned. And an oil rig right now, about to hop in. Out with Fisher and his Mako. First dive trip of the summer, quick afternoon. Deep green water. Let's get it. In the water here, this is our first dive of the day, and I am not impressed with the water clarity. Super, super dirty. We do see some jackarbells right here that swim up, but it's just not good when you're trying to dive it to depth, and the water is number one, super dirty, and number two, gonna get really, really dark. Dive number two here, I'm gonna play the entire clip with a timer down in the bottom left. You can see that that murk is just ruthless. We've been having heaps of rain here lately, and that fresh water mixed with the salt water has just created a gnarly murk layer. But I keep pushing through, and right at about 30, 35 feet, it just opens up deep, clear green water. I'm looking around here, sinking deeper, and check out what we see. So we stick this nice red snapper, it is season now, down here in Texas. I put a nice shot right behind the gill plate and I know this fish isn't going anywhere. When I swim back up, you can actually see it transition from that nice clear water to the, the Merkler that we had to dive through. It's pretty wild. Big school of red snapper. Yeah. Good size. There was two or three other bigger ones, but I have a bunch of water in my mouth, so I can't see very well, so I took the best shot. How deep? 40. It gets super clear. Just check out the nasty fizz up here on the surface. One thing I really hate about this kind of water and murk layer is that holding a fish in water like this means that, uh, well, you can't see if anything is coming after your thrashing fish. On the flip side, those fish down at depth can't really see you diving down at them. That murk creates a very nice concealment so you can sneak up on those smarter, more wary fish. Mean green water calls for big red snapper. First drop, really, I took one warm up dive. Well, my first drop down to where the water cleared up on 40 foot, we found this donk. There we go, y'all. I'm gonna put him back, leave him here in the boat, and go back in the water to spot Fisher so he can get a dive and hopefully put a spear in one. We'll get the big camera out here in a little bit. Don't want to waste too much time since we are out here on an afternoon trip. Today is a run and gun, simple kind of filming style video. Dude, it's so clean. I know. That's so cool. That's awesome. Yeah, we're good. No, you're good. Very good. Current's pretty soft. Dude, that looks so cool. I just I know. Now, I was like, oh my god, I knew it would be clear. Yeah. So as I mentioned after the red snapper dive, my mask was leaking and I was getting a bunch of water 
uh, seepage through the bottom up into my nose and this can be accredited to the fact that I didn't shave before this trip and it was really giving me trouble on the descent when all of that water was rushing down into the mask lens because of gravity uh, originally it was just seeping up through into my nose um, obviously going down it just started to fill up everything so what I was doing was actually just trying to level out and put my head above my body so that gravity will push all the water back down. We actually grabbed this rope that holds onto the rig and we're seeing tons of juvenile red snapper. There's some sheep's head, spade fish, a couple keeper red snapper I'm trying to lure in closer to me. All right, well, we almost had another snapper. I was going down there, I saw him. Not a giant, but it was a decent sized keeper red, and uh, my mask just started filling up, and had my gun up pointed at the snapper, I just couldn't get pinpointed on it and take a shot that I was comfortable with. So, decided to come back up and uh, not miss the fish, so. But yeah, we came out here, very, very quick trip offshore. It's a little bit windy now, a little bit choppy, but. I was very pleasantly surprised by our luck. Right at the surface, it's super dirty as you guys can see, uh, but we dove down and right about 35, 40 foot, it just got stellar down there. Super clear green. I didn't shave before this trip since it was super last minute. I tried to get Fisher to get up and go offshore early this morning, but he was asleep. So we came out later and I uh, wasn't planning on doing a trip this late. So uh, yeah, this little mustache here, making my mask leak and uh, it's just, I can't see underwater. The water's filling up here and uh, getting in my eyes, so. Yeah, we're gonna move on from here. I'm not sure if we're gonna head back or go to another rig. You guys stay tuned. All right, y'all, we're gonna call it here. We just hit one rig. We haven't even been out here for an hour, I don't think, and we're gonna go back in. Not much else we can really do. Maybe shoot one more snapper each, but we don't really need uh, the meat right now. We only want a couple for dinner. So. Yeah, good quick trip. Wind's picking up like I was saying, so it's getting a little bit rougher, and uh, might as well head in while it's nice and not to fight the waves. Good quick trip. All right, we are back. There is the snapper I shot. Fisher got him a nice one as well. Quick trip out there. We probably weren't out there for an hour. And we got some really, really solid meat for the freezer. Okay, y'all, so you've been asking, what's the deal with the Panga? Where's the update video? Well, right now I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of some of the work I did I guess about a week ago since then it's been in the shop. I don't know if they've done any work on the boat or not. I doubt it, they do seem pretty backed up. I'm hoping they can get to it soon. Uh, probably in the next video though, I'm gonna head back over there and see if I can grind out uh, some more work. So stay tuned for an upcoming Panga restoration video. But for right now, I'm just gonna show you guys a little snippet of what I did on the boat. Basically, I have been removing the fiberglass strips connected to the floor and the gunnel walls and up towards the bow where we have that raised deck uh, there's these little stubs you can see right there i'm actually cutting them out and what they were for was to uh, hold a large yeti in place so it doesn't slide around but i don't have one of those yetis and all this thing has served me so far is just being a toe stub so i'm going to cut it out we're not doing it mainly because the toe thing but more so because I couldn't really get in this corner over here and sand away how I need to to prep this boat for new fiberglass and more paint. So main reason I'm doing this is to just access this area more so and clean it up so the finished boat is nicer and cleaner, but also because we don't really need it and I've actually hit my toe on it multiple times.
Well, that's all I got for today's video. If you guys liked the video, please drop a like down below and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really, really helps the channel out, pushes my videos in the YouTube algorithm and helps this thing grow. So with that said, I wanted to mention, I do have a Patreon page. If you guys haven't checked it out already, go check it out in the link below. I post a lot of updates behind the scenes, exclusive footage, extra content, stuff like that. And I also text back and forth with quite a few of my patrons quite a bit. So if you guys are interested in exchanging tips, knowledge, etc., consider checking that out down below. And I almost forgot to mention, we are doing a somewhat of a giveaway. I want to do a fishing trip to those who are really supporting the channel out. And basically once we get this panga all situated and done, cleaned up, I want to bring one of you guys out there offshore or inshore, whatever the weather permits, and uh, do a panga fishing trip. The way to enter is to, number one, become a patron. If already existing patrons are entered into the giveaway, if that's not up your alley, then uh, go check out the link Lonesome Country Store in the description box below and pick yourself up a Salty Soul apparel shirt, any kind, doesn't matter what color, what design. Any of those will automatically enter you into the giveaway. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited to get this boat done, number one, and share with one of you guys uh, the new finished product and hopefully a great fishing trip. That's all I got for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I really appreciate the view. And uh, until the next one, I'll catch y'all later.